Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's version of uh, Digital HQ Live, where this week we have Ray McKellar, the Managing Director for Sales Readiness Group, joining us to talk about how to sell to the C suite in 2022. Well, Ray, thank you so much for joining us, number one. Well, yeah, Thomas, Brandon, thanks for the invite. Uh, it's a topic we're really passionate about, and uh, I know one that we've kind of connected and chatted about, so look forward to diving in. Well, thank you. Brandon, did you want to introduce yourself? Because I can never do it justice. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'm Brandon Lee. I'm the founder of Funnel Amplified. I'm I'm introducing to everybody, not, not to Ray, right? Is that what you were asking me to do? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm the founder of Funnel Amplified, and I, you know, this whole uh, digital selling, digital relationship building, uh, starting conversations with ideal customers has has been my my passion for over 20 years. But specifically in digital and social for the past five. Thank you, and I'm Thomas Ross, and and I'm the uh, chief revenue officer for Funnel Amplified. And obviously, I work very closely with uh, Brandon, and I've been in uh, sales enablement and training for a couple of years now. Okay, so it's over 20, but still, it's been a bit. Um, and Ray, we are so happy to have you here with us today. You know, the topic we're talking about today is probably, from my perspective, and I'm sure you're, you're going to add a lot to this, as is Brandon, one of the most important aspects of sales. And that is how and why uh, do you reach the C-suite? Do you want to sort of kick off your perspective with that? And then we'll jump into some of the other high points as we go. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thanks thanks for the intro, Thomas. And yeah, so again, I'm Ray Mackle. I'm a partner and managing director at Sales Readiness Group, for a sales and sales management training company. So uh, this is what we help B2B sales organizations uh, across industries throughout the world uh, really improve their skills that help them ultimately Im improve their sales performance. And one of the key skills is really this idea of how do you reach key executives and what do you say when you get there? And what's interesting, and, you know, I don't have to tell you uh, this, Brandon or Thomas, that, you know, this is a theme that we probably heard our whole careers, right? You need to get higher. You need to get to that C-suite. You need to be selling at the highest level. But one, it's not easy to do. And then, you know, the challenge of if we get there, we better have something relevant to say. And so there's nothing worse than maybe we get that meeting through a referral or something. And it, if, it, if you show up and it feels like a pitch, you're going to lose that executive's attention in about 30 seconds and they're on to next things. Or suddenly their uh, assistant comes in because they have another meeting or uh, a different priority, right? So... I think this is a, a really interesting topic today because it is evolving and leveraging social, leveraging digital. There's some things we can do to really up our game and improve that conversation. But the, the one point that I'll just start with is it is more important today than ever. And there's some research actually from Chorus uh, that they did. They analyzed about 500,000 sales calls during the pandemic. And they found, interestingly enough, that the C-level or executive level was more likely to be involved in buying decisions since the pandemic started than before. Actually, 86% more likely to have a seat at the table or be in that Zoom meeting or, or in that virtual meeting, be part of that buying decision. And I think it's likely for a couple of reasons, right? Uh, one is budgets are, are being scrutinized. There, there's a lot of attention on that. And uh, there is, there are more people involved. We know that every year there are more and more people involved in the buying decisions. So the executive's likely to be there and it may be easier for them to pop into a virtual meeting or to join that instead of having to, you know, fly across the country or uh, be in the conference room. So, so we see that they're more likely to be there. But the other thing that's really interesting is when they looked at these sales calls, if you're able to engage the executive earlier in the sales cycle and really engage them in that conversation. When win rates went up by like 38% for those deals that had an executive engaged from early on. So obviously there's a compelling reason to do that. Now, what we're gonna talk about here is how do we do that, right? What, what's different and how can we engage? But anyway, I thought that's kind of interesting as a backdrop that it's more important and if it can help us uh, 
significantly improve our win rates, you know, we should probably pay attention to that. I think that's a great way to kick it off. Let me ask you a question. How does that relate or, or does it um, with, with the fact that um, in most organizations today, in order to have impact with respect to the solution you're presenting, you very often have to uh, reach an entire buying group that can, in some cases can be 20 plus people. How does that happen and how do you mix that in to the process as you're describing it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really critical and, and part of our research process, as we talk about in, in our programs, is, is really understanding the organization and mapping that organization. So, you know, this is even more critical when you're selling to the C-suite is we need to do our homework. This isn't a 10 minute call plan. This is really going to school on that organization, right? Understanding what's happening in the industry, understanding the innards of the company and, and what's going on with their, you know, earnings report, uh, with their uh, projections going forward with trends and priorities that may be in their annual report or their investment presentation. So we want to understand all of that and then understand the people that may be involved. So one of the key concepts is, do we have a coach or an ally, somebody who can help us map that account? And as you said, Thomas, if there are 20 people, well, who are those people and how are they likely to vote or what do they care about? And then one of the key themes we'll come back to is, we need to be tailoring our message to who those key stakeholders are. Because if we show up with a generic pitch, that may resonate with the chief marketing officer, but the CFO is sitting back with his, his or her arms crossed, uh, wondering how it's gonna reduce cost. So you know, we need to really think about all the stakeholders and how our solution addresses their business priorities, not just at a generic level. Well, I really love that comment, uh, go to school. On the on the account that you're working and do, and doing the research, I, I think that's that's so critical today. And we have such an incredible tools today that allow us to do that rapidly uh, and quickly and efficiently. Sales Navigator comes to mind uh, with respect to laying out those key people as you describe them. Uh, and so LinkedIn gives us even more information with 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 respect to that. Uh, so you're able to do that very quickly and very rapidly and then build out those lists that you want to reach. Uh, but I guess the question still remains, how do you get in front of all those people, including the leadership, the C-suite, the in a way that you can now rapidly and quickly and productively engage today in the digital world? Yeah, and access strategies are, are really important, right? I mean, that really is at the, at the heart of this. And so breaking that down to, you know, who do we know? Are there people, again, that can give us information and insights, help us develop our messaging? Because we need to go in with a premise, right? We need to go in with an idea of how we can help that organization. Ideally, maybe we've helped another organization like theirs, and we could say, hey, Thomas, you know, I'd love to chat with you about how we helped a very similar organization to yours increase their productivity and reduce cost. Um, you know, can we have 15 minutes to chat about that? So, so I think we need to have a compelling message and then we need to really think about all those stakeholders, as we mentioned, that may be able to help us uh, with, within the organization. So it's a multi-pronged approach and we really need to understand what's going to resonate with that individual. The other piece I'll mention on, on access strategies is really the idea, the value of a good referral. And again, I don't need to tell you to this, this, that's something we've heard it forever. Oh, we should always be getting referrals. But if I have an executive level referral, if I'm connected to somebody, you mentioned LinkedIn, I see, oh, I'm connected to Thomas and Thomas is connected to that person I'm meeting with. At very least, I should ask you and understand everything you know about that individual, their personality, their communication style. Maybe you know what's going on within the org. And if I can get you to tee up that referral, or I can at least drop that into the first sentence of my access uh, email or even a personalized video, uh, the open rate and the response rate to that is going to be astronomically higher, right? If I have that connection and that personal connection that I can bring uh, to get that meeting. So I think we need to leverage all of those techniques when we're really trying to, uh, you know, get the stakeholders at the table. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I think that that's that's great insight. So, what's different from your perspective uh, in selling and trying to reach the C-suite 
as compared to trying to reach some of the other folks on the team and in the buying group? Yeah, I, I think we really need to put ourselves, I love that question because I, I think it really does get to the heart of the challenge. We need to put ourselves in uh, the seat, right? In, in the role of that executive and think about what's going on in their world. So they're probably back-to-back -back meetings. They're probably working, you know, long days. Their time is worth a lot, you know? So if you look at whatever their salary is at an hourly rate, you know, every meeting they're in is worth hundreds of dollars, literally. So why should they give you that half hour, that 45 minutes, whatever you're asking for? You better have a pretty compelling business case or business reason to do that. So one of the things we like to do in our programs is really break down the personas of those key executives that you're calling on and really think about that, that person, that role, and the carabouts, right? What are those key issues? So if I'm calling on the chief marketing officer, I better be thinking about how this is going to improve their brand, the image, how it's really going to help them differentiate themselves with their customers. Where if I'm calling on a chief financial officer or chief operating officer, I need to be thinking much more about efficiency and headcount and productivity. So I need to learn to speak the language that they're using and ideally understanding their priorities, right? So that I can be more relevant when I get there. And that goes back to once we show up, we need to put our CFO hat on or our CMO hat on or our CEO hat on and think about how our message would resonate with that particular role that we're calling on. Sure. I love that. I love that. So I see in, 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 in the case of your LinkedIn profile and your activity, Ray, you put up a lot of videos and a lot of great content. Does that help you in this process as well? And if so, how? Yeah, and, and I think that is the area where this is kind of blending together. You know, it used to be like, oh, there's this whole separate thing called social selling. And right. guess what? I think it's just one of the skills now, right? It's just part of uh, what we need to be able to do, part of the competency of being a good salesperson. So having those videos or a blog or content that you're sharing increases our relevancy, right? Gets our brand out there, gets a little bit of recognition, one of the interesting things I heard from a, a video company that you know provides the ability to send outbound videos, because uh, we we're asking the question, well, if you send an outbound video, personalized video to a C-level person, are they likely to open it? And it's kind of interesting, uh, and I think really compelling in this case, that probably the first time if you do that, they're going to say, well, who is this person? I don't know them. Maybe it's even a little creepy. You get this personalized email in your inbox going, well, wait, what, what's this all about? And they're going to delete it, right? They, you haven't made a case or a reason to do that. However, if they've seen my face, you know, a couple times a week because we're connected on LinkedIn or maybe we shared some other content, they're like, oh, yeah, I know those guys. You know, I know Thomas. He, he's, he's got some good stuff out there. I may actually read the email. I may click on that link and watch the video I'm actually going to engage. So, uh, you know, by about the third or fourth touch, we've warmed up and we're at a point where now we can have more of a personal connection. And what we're trying to do is then prime the pump where they're likely to either take the call or respond to that email and say, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in learning more. You know, l let's set up a meeting or uh, why don't you send me that? And, you know, hey, by the way, I have this great report I thought you might be interested in. Can we set up a few minutes? I'd love to brief you on what's going on in your industry, right? Or something that's gonna get your attention. Right, right. Brandon, did you wanna add anything to, to that? Uh, I'm just sitting here learning a lot. <laughs> I'm, yeah. not, I'm not used to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's all great stuff, right? I mean, yeah, you know, I think that, I think that ch the challenge that I see a lot in, in everything that, that Ray's saying about access and being prepared and know your audience and mm -hmm. make sure that you've, you've gone to school to speak to that person, I think it's all spot on. I think where so much of the challenge is now is getting to that first conversation. You know, it, it used to be that we could cold call and we could cold email, we could, you know, knock on doors. And I think that um, that was well received by a lot of buyers because sellers were the source of information that they desperately needed. And now that that has gone away, that they don't, you know, the C-suite or, or even anyone in, in senior management, they don't need salespeople for information. We, you know, salespeople need to create a, 
um, a desire on their part to speak to them. And that comes through sharing content, having a personal brand, or like I, I'd rather say a reputation. If you have a reputation and you're known as somebody that is knowledgeable, insightful, connected, get, you know, experienced, then they welcome you into those conversations. But salespeople have got to take the effort to build that reputation. And that comes through content, distribution of content, consistency of content. And, and Ray, I like what you said, when, when we can use our social presence or our digital um, content presence to move ourselves from being cold and unknown into being warm and known, our KPIs increase dramatically. Yeah, yeah. I, I would add to that just real quick because I like yeah. part of what you said as well uh, in that you talked about how uh, salespeople today have to be utilizing all of these skills and not one or the other and not one part of the uh, traditional sales methodologies they're used to using, but combining that with some of the digital tools that are available. Well, not, you know, dispelling and getting rid of all that. It's the alignment and the combination of all of those skills that brings the whole picture together. Uh, and I really like what you said with, with respect to that. And I think very often that's where the challenge is, is that many salespeople and companies think if you want to add um, this digital technology or you want to add this new sales tool or you want to add this new platform that you've got to dispel with everything you've been doing in order to do that. And, and that's not always an effective way to go. Uh, and in fact, will create more problems. Whereas if you get people to start learning some of these additional tools, along with the skills that they have, as you so, so aptly put, now you've got a much more robust uh, set of skills that can have the impact. Um, but I would ask you an additional question. Yeah. And that is, what are some of the other creative ways that you would suggest uh, that we can reach the C-suite through all these different methods that we're talking about. Yeah, and I, I, and I love your point, Thomas, because I, it it's a yes and, right? It, it's not like, hey, you need to forget everything you ever learned about sales and do it this way. It's It's gotten more complicated. You know, we know the buyers are more informed, to your point, Brandon. They're further along in the buying journey than they've been before because they've educated themselves. They've probably talked to our competition. They've looked at the website. Right. They, they know that. So they're not relying on us. So we need to be even better and, and I think more creative about how we do that. So, yeah, you know, in terms of access and so we're hopefully building our brand, maybe maybe they've seen us or, or at least they're aware of us. And, and that helps. Um, that's why referrals are so important, as we touched on, is that makes an immediate connection and increases that trust. Right. If it's somebody that they trust that has made the connection for us. So I think that can be really valuable. Um, and then a couple of the other things we, we talk about in our program is, you know, create a compelling reason to meet. So, and it's not the, hey, I happen to be in the neighborhood. Can I stop by, right? That's probably not going to work, especially on Zoom. Can I pop in for a Zoom meeting, right? But can I brief you on this research we just, just did? Can I share with you or connect you with one of my customers who just knocked it out of the park and had this great success story. Uh, can we provide a lunch and learn? You know, we'd love to come in and share with you some of what we're seeing in the industry. So now I've created a compelling reason and an, frankly, an excuse, but to get that person at the table, it's like, oh yeah, that's interesting. You know, I'll, I'll take my lunch hour to do that or I'll pop in and, and listen. Um, so I think that that reason to meet can be really important. And the other thing is, you know, the whole idea of selling with insights, which is not new, but what can we bring them that they don't know? So is there something, because we've done our research, we understand the industry, you know, hopefully we've, we've read, uh, you know, enough that we understand the trends. And again, maybe we've seen a similar client that we can share what happened there or how they responded. But, you know, that idea of really understanding deep a deeper level what's going on politically what's going on economically what's going on socially what's going on technologically right the old pest analysis if we can understand and bring them something 
uh, that's insightful that they don't know along those lines. Now we've again created a, a reason or created an insight that they're likely to respond to if uh, you know we tease them in an email and say, I'd, I'd like to chat more, I'd like to share some ideas again, but we better have something relevant to say because we, we probably have a pretty short time frame before they're like, oh, you're just here to pitch me on product. I, I don't I don't have time. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I Brian, is there something you would add to that in terms of your response to the same question? No, you know, I think I think where my my world is um, and, and the people how we train and, and what we train them in is I agree with with everything Ray saying. I think that the beginning stages of being able to create that reputation when position yourself in a way that they are willing to take that call or receive that email or take that, that LinkedIn message and take it to the next level. For me, that's where most salespeople are either striving or dying because it's activities that are very new and different, right? Traditionally salespeople, you knew I'm going to get to the sales job. I'm either going to put my butt in a seat and make a bunch of phone calls. I'm going to put my butt in a seat and do calls and emails, or I'm going to put my butt in my car seat and I'm going to go drive around and knock on doors, right? Sales was always about where we put our butts. However, a lot of those tools have reduced in efficacy. So getting that first conversation, I believe, is the biggest challenge right now. And then, and that's where, as Ray said earlier, based on what you were saying, Thomas, it's not either or, it's and. We need to be skilled at all those. And we've got to develop new skills, a new persona, a new personal brand, or a new reputation that helps open those doors or gets those calls returned faster. That's, that's where I think we are in, in 2022 and the rest of 2020 of the 20s. Mm -hmm. is capturing attention is the hardest part. And then once you get attention, you got to be super prepared and all that because you can right, lose right. it like that by not being prepared or, or, you know, having the wrong conversation with the right person and all those types of things. But just getting that first conversation, man, that's, that's tough. Okay, yeah, I completely Thanks, agree. And, and it's gotten harder, right? I mean, we have... Uh, now tools out there that are automating those scripts. And so we're getting bombarded, right, with, uh, with email scripts, with inbound, with even LinkedIn, you know, in messages. And I'm sure we all get them. We get the connection request mm -hmm. and then immediately we get the pitch. And so the filters, right, and, and the, the bar has been raised in terms of cutting through that noise. So it becomes even more personalized, and that's why I think when we're selling to the C-suite, when we're selling to the key executives, we need to slow down a little bit. And, you know, we, we need to be uh, hunting with that sniper rifle instead of the shotgun. And we need to really think about, OK, if this is a target account that could be one of my biggest clients, I really need to be spending time understanding that individual, understanding the organization and putting that messaging together and then being creative about how we go about it. So again, we talked about some of it, if we've got a referral or we're creating an event, but even the outreach of, okay, we're gonna do an email, but we're also gonna do something social that might be relevant to them. Maybe I've got a video that I could also send that's a piece of content that they might appreciate, but I'm gonna maybe do some old school tactics, hand write them a letter, right? If I can get that to them. Um, you know, send them that personalized video that says hello and lays out my value proposition to them um, or find that reason to connect with them in a discussion group or, you know, maybe we find out what groups they're engaged with um, online that, that we could start to follow and collaborate or comment, mm -hmm. you know, even just following them on LinkedIn and making a comment and liking and they start to see you and start to recognize and like, oh, that was an insightful comment. And that's not just clicking like or just saying, oh, great point, right? But really engaging with them. So I, I think, again, it's all of the above that we need to be more relevant. We need to create a more personal relationship. And then we need to do creative things to get on their calendar uh, 
that some are new, like digital and video and, and engaging, and some are old school, like the handwritten note or finding out if they have an administrative assistant and working to build a relationship. I mean, that was the old gatekeeper. Hey, how do you find <laughs> out who the admin is and make sure you're helping them and being very, um, you know, trustworthy, responsive, being very engaging and finding out that person because they control the calendar often. And and with, with key executives, that's often still the case, right? A lot of executives manage their own calendar, but uh, there are still admins who are doing that and they're the ones who can get you on the calendar. And so we still want to use those types of techniques to say, oh, great, then Brandon, you know, can you get me 15 minutes on Thomas's calendar? Because we talked about this issue and, and it's something that's relevant. So I, yeah. I think we need to consider all of those creative tactics. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, it, it's fine. I feel like we're playing this ping pong match here, right. uh, but we're on the same team, actually. Right. Like everything is, I agree. And I focus in on one of the things that you said. And then Joseph, I, I saw your comment. I'll, I'll get it back up there and we'll address yeah. it here in a second as we transition that topic. But you had talked about, um, you said like, oh, go and like comment on their post. It's not a like, but actually engaging with them. My, our data and my experience over the last four years is that's the key right now to sales success. It's hmm. got to start at that very, very beginning because similar to, I think what, what Joseph asked here, we can have the case studies, we can have the data, we can have the company reputation, we can have all those things but we got to get them wanting to speak to us in the first place. And sometimes case studies, data, and all that's not enough because they'll go, they'll get it when they want it. And they, they, the buyers are not on our time schedules just because salespeople are starting to say, I got this doesn't mean buyers need to respond. It's not part of their current timeline or whatever it is. But when we go, and this for me is old school applied in a digital uh, in a digital world, we still need to go to, they need to know, like, and trust us. And that opens doors. And we could create that for ourselves, just like we did with networking in the old days. We could do digital version of networking by being a social engager. But it's not, we post it and expect all them to come engage with us. We need to put them into a system, into a cadence, and go engage with them. We need to show up in their world with valuable information, insights, comments, and become part of their digital community. And when we do that before we send the connection request, the, our data shows we, it's 50% or more positive acceptances. And then immediately it's a 30 to 40% increase in conversations because we've got to demonstrate. Uh, that's the only thing we can do is demonstrate our value. And in that process of demonstrating, we move ourselves from being a cold unknown person to a warm known person. And that's the modern version of being known, like, and trusted. Joseph, we added that. I don't know if you're still there or not, but yeah. um, that was my attempt to kind of answer what you were saying and also say something that, you know, piggybacked off of, of what Ray was saying. So thanks for that, Joseph. Yeah, and I'll just respond to that as well, because I think it is, and you know, his question around, well, but how do you really drive interest? And, you know, I think we keep coming back to that. It's like, yeah, yeah, but we've heard all that before. You know, how is it different? But I think we need to do all those things, right? That's why the best athletes still go to the driving range or the batting cage or, or the pitch and they practice the craft. So so I think those foundational things that, that we've heard are still very valid. And then we need to up our game. And so an example of that, when I talked about, you know, bringing an insight, right? So So the question was, how do we actually get them to respond, really? So if we're trying to bring an insight to them that's going to compel them to to meet instead of just sending the email you know what if we send that personalized video hopefully we've warmed them up maybe they're familiar with us but you know we work with uh, vidyard right so so they allow outbound video loom there are other great tools to do that you can capture that video but if i do that with the little thumbnail you've probably seen the bubbles right in the corner brandon i saw one of yours right so you have that but 
in the background is their annual report or in the background is their investor presentation or even their website. And then you're hitting a couple of key points saying, you know, I was really interested in your strategy this year is to grow in Asia pack. I'd like to chat with you about how we helped another client do that and increase their sales by 20%. Wow. If I'm an executive, you've got my attention. How did you do that? And, you know, I want to know what my peers are doing, my competitors are doing. So I think that goes back to the, we need to really think about for that individual, what's that hook? What's that insight we can bring? And if we can do it visually, if we can do it with something that are like, oh, that's interesting. They took the time and the bar is pretty low. I have to tell you guys, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's surprising. It's amazing to me the number of times even just saying, oh, I was just, uh, you know, listening to your earnings call and it was really interesting. They're like, wow, you did? That was, that was great. I haven't, I haven't even listened to that. And you're like, well, no, <laughs> they said these are your three priorities. Is that accurate? Yeah, actually, that's what the CEO keeps talking about. No surprise, right? That, right. that shouldn't be uh, something new to us, but, but just making that linkage. And I will say, because most salespeople are not taking the time to do that, we immediately go you know, to the head of the class and with video, I'll tell you that the number of times when we send an outbound, crafted, personalized video, and even if it doesn't result in a sale, but it results in a, that was really creative. Thanks for taking the time to do that. You really cut through the noise. We'll keep you in mind. Or um, actually, it resulted in a great deal last year where they said that was what got you the meeting and and got you on our radar screen and, and you know, immediately resulted in an opportunity moving forward. And we have tons of those meetings where I don't think we would have had the meeting without that personalized touch. Hmm. Well, these are all great. And, and I love all of this. I'd ask you a question with respect to this, right? Just in terms of your experience. Can, so, can I, can I interrupt real quick? Can you hold that one second, Thomas? I want to ask Ray a question on that. Um, as you were talking about and I love the idea of using, uh, we use Loom, but using Loom yeah. or Vidyard and having yeah. their report open or something. I, I Just a quick comment to that, Thomas. I'm so sorry. But for me, what you just described there was a difference between what, what uh, so much marketing is like personalization, but moving it beyond personalization and being human. You know what I mean? That There's a lot of stuff that can be personalized. And, and there's a lot of marketing content out there about personal, personal, personal. It means, oh, the email has their name and, and, and over here it has their company name and, and maybe over here it says the industry they're in and we go, ooh, we personalized it. Right. But you, what you are saying takes human effort. There's not an easy button to do that. There's no automation that's going to go create that video for you. We still have to go back to be a human being and take the time and, 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 a, and a term that we use a lot, sometimes you've got to go slow to move fast do that well for that one person. And maybe you're only reaching out to 10 or 15 people in a day, but when you're doing a hundred people with cold calls, you're still not talking to anybody. So I just, I just really yeah. want to emphasize that what you said there, Ray, I think is, is a brilliant tactic. And I think for people to understand why that's a good tactic, because too often sales leaders will go, Oh, we don't have time for that. And my opinion is you don't have time not to do that. No, I love that. I'll just respond and then back to you, Thomas. But uh, actually, we, we published a blog on, uh, you know, kind of relating Moneyball. If people have seen uh, the movie Moneyball, right? Love the Great analytic. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Brad Pitt and, and, and Jonah Hill. Um, and the whole idea of, you know, breaking baseball down to analytics. And then what does it really matter? And the key premise was get them on first base, right? How do we get to first base? Because then you can get in scoring position, you score more runs, you win more games. Well, the equivalent of that, in sales, I believe, is booking that first meeting, mm -hmm. right? So that's our money ball is mm -hmm. how do we get that first meeting? Because if we get the first meeting, we're likely to uncover an opportunity. We're likely to submit a proposal. We're more likely to win the business. So let's break that down and think about how do we get on first base, right? How do we book the first meeting? And so to your point, Brandon, when we go through our sales funnel math, Right. And we've all seen that. How much do you want to book? How many proposals is that? How many meetings is that? How many calls, emails? Right. We come to the top and it's like, I have to do 8000 touches to hit my number and everybody's you know, brain explodes. Well, Brandon, your point is so spot on, because if we can narrow that funnel 
And that's what I would say. You don't need to make 8,000 calls if you right. increase your batting average. So instead of calling 80 people a day and getting, you know, six connects and one conversation and every three days, maybe we're able to get a meeting. If I'm able to do a narrower approach, maybe I make 20 outbound touches, but I actually get five responses and I'm able to book a meeting every day. I've just blown my number out of the water with much less, at least cold calling effort, but much more focused and, and, you know, that's why we're, we're hunting elephants instead of, you know, yep. shooting with a shotgun or whatever the, uh, hunting with a shotgun, whatever the analogy. Yeah. I, I want everyone to know I'm getting so much out of that. I don't know if any of our audience is, but I'm enjoying, I'm taking all these notes over here. Like I'm, like I'm just listening, but, uh, so I'm not I, writing well, emails. I, I want everybody to know. Well, that, that's great, but I still have a question. So my question is, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so sorry. It, Tom. it hasn't gotten away. So I'm, I'm still going to put it out there. Yeah. Um, this this is all there. this is all great, and all of these tools are there, and all these different things that that, that we can be doing. But the reality today, uh, with most companies and most sales teams, is they're not doing many of these things, okay. especially when it comes to using video in the way that you described, in using the way we can touch and 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 get in front of people and with digital and other methods, right? And and they're not doing that today. So my question to you, uh, to you is, I mean, I know you're out there training and you're involved in this whole process. Why do you think that companies aren't yet taking advantage of some of these additional skills that they can bring to bear to this process, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a number of reasons. Um, it's just not taught, right? We, we, we haven't yet gotten to a point where it's part of the onboarding or it's just uh, part of the DNA. Um, it's harder right? It takes a little bit more thought. It's easier to just say, well, I've got my list. I'm going to, you know, press auto dial and make my 80 calls and hope that somebody picks up. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're kind of ingrained in that. And frankly, that's easier to measure, easier to measure quantity than quality. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I don't care how many times you swing the bat. I care how many times you get on first base. So let's go back to, uh, you know, how many of those first meetings are you getting and now can we do those things that uh, they get there? And I know there was a comment about, well, the videos just don't get open or even emails, you know, maybe don't respond. I think we need to be compelling, even if we're sending a video and there's, there's research around this as well, we need to still have a really compelling subject line and we need to have a compelling first or second line intro before the video. Because, yeah, they're probably not going to just click on a video from some random person. We already talked about hopefully we've warmed them up. Maybe they know who we are. But we're also providing that insight or that hook or the why should I even listen to this 30 second video? Hey, I wanted to share with you some insights that are in this video about how we can help you improve your productivity. Oh, well, I, I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to, again, be be relevant enough to get them to either click on the email, open the video, or ideally respond and say, sure, you know, let's have a conversation. But isn't it also true that, that the video that you put up on LinkedIn or, or Instagram or wherever you put up your video based upon your target customer profiles, um, isn't it also true that you can gain direct inbound from that based upon your target audience and be able to begin an engagement right from there in addition to some of the other methods and doesn't that lead to the rest of the process absolutely i mean that that's the premise and we would all love that right you know we have ten thousand followers and we put up a video and then we just wait for the phone to ring um unfortunately it's probably not it, it takes a long time to build that kind of a following and get that momentum what i will say and this is that whole kind of dark uh dark web or dark sources you know, sometimes we don't know where that lead came from, but I can share a number of times anecdotally where we've gotten an inbound, but it's directly after we posted some content or even a dormant lead. And we've had a number of these this year. They went dormant during COVID. Maybe they put things on hold and they've come back and they've come back to life and they've done it right after we posted some content. So I can't say it was as a result of that, but my premise is, they see us, they're, they're reminded of us. And I mean, we just had one yesterday that literally was like, hey, from two years ago, 
they said, oh, we want to pick up that conversation. Can you dust off the proposal? We want to do that project. And it was right after we had just posted a video. So, you know, I think that staying top of mind, getting the brand out there. Oh, yeah, I remember those guys. You know, I think that's what we're trying to do. But we have to have a little bit of trust and belief, right, that if we do it, they will come. Sorry for the baseball analogies, but, um, you know, that we'll build the following and, and create enough interest. I think we need a show that's all all around baseball movie analogies. Oh, wait, we just did it. Never mind. Right, right. Uh, you know, Ray, I think um, just to, to piggyback again on what you said there, um, and then I, I confused myself with the same baseball analogies there. But um, what you were saying, I think, is also the reason why sales people to the C-suite, to senior leadership, all need to be content creators and content publishers yeah. because what you said, and, and I agree with that. Sometimes we create content in a, in a theme over a two week or a one month period. And all of a sudden somebody comes out of the cobwebs and, and pops back up, but that's relying on our business page or our blog or our newsletter to do the work. When, if we've got 20, 30, 50, 5,000 people on the team and they're all also creating that content or resharing the company pages and doing that. It just amplifies our reach very, very dramatically. And I think it's, it's one of those tactics that a lot of companies go, Oh yeah, yeah. But then when you look at their business and you look at the people in their business, they're not actually doing it. Yeah. I think it is a very, very powerful sales tactic when it's implemented at scale in the company and it's done consistently and properly. But I do still believe way too many companies give that lip service, but don't actually implement that. I would just add to that real quick. There was a comment made there with respect to your video and, and, and the data with respect to who saw it and, and the likelihood that that call that or that inbound that you got was reflected based upon the content that you put up. The fact is, Ray, if the content is done properly on purpose and targeted and then and then analyzed, you can see that. And that data is there. You know, the thing about digital that I love is that it's right now. I don't have to wait a week or two weeks or three weeks for response times. I can find out right now what did or didn't happen. Plus, I can find out if the impact I'm having is with the audience that I'm after, specifically with the target accounts and those CEOs or C-suite that I might be interested in talking to. I can see if they engage. And then on that basis, I can reach right back out. I don't have to wait for it to be inbound. I don't have to take a passive approach. In fact, if I take a passive approach, as you so rightly put, uh, the odds of that happening are much lower than if I reach out and I say, hey, John, I see you took a moment uh, to watch this. Hey, thanks so much. What points did you find really of interest based upon blah, 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 and away you go, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that can happen right over LinkedIn. That can happen over uh, social media, or that can happen uh, over, a, over a phone call that you've now warmed up on that basis. So all of these things come into play. But the one thing that, that digital and social selling brings that traditional selling has more of a challenge with, certainly marketing if I use traditional marketing as the, uh, as the example, is they don't bring the same kind of immediate data and results that you can gain when you have a system and a process and a cadence, like Brandon was talking about earlier, in place to watch and actually evaluate what you're doing and then continually improve, right? This video, such as the great ones that you do, Ray, has gotten really good impact. We need to use that on in this audience as well. And then we can gauge the impact of that and then dive in and do more and then really fertilize that ground for even more opportunities within, within that target group. So digital gives you a lot more of that real-time information rather than just you know, lobbying things out there. And, and hoping that that turns into to more inbound. But to your point, um, there's no doubt at all um, that, that content creates engagement and activity that you just wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, and, and I will say it doesn't mean that every salesperson needs to be a content strategist, right? 
and needs to have their own blog and needs to be doing, you know, personalized videos every day. And I think that's, you know, to the point of the, the sales enablement role and marketing, are there insights that we can share and just little nuggets that we can push out and say, oh, well, that's interesting. I appreciate that information because I know a lot of sales leaders are concerned about, well, wait, am I going to take my BDRs and have them publishing, you know, original content every day? That, that may be a little scary. Some are great and you see a lot of really insightful, you know, content that's out there uh, from, from fairly junior reps. And I think, you know, it's wonderful if you can do it, but it doesn't have to be, they can be resharing, as you said, if you have a company page or, or their insights, it's just getting it out there and, and getting that cadence going. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think, I, I do think as we keep saying, it's, it's not either or it's, and yeah. And because sales is getting more complicated or it's getting more competitive, I do think that our sales teams need to learn how to be, and I'm going to say this content creators, mm -hmm. they don't need to be the, the marketing team, right? but they need to learn how to consistently create content from their own voice. And I don't think it's a big jump but because they're already doing this. They just call it something different. Like, when you create a personal vidyard video, that's a piece of content, in my yeah. opinion, right? When you reply to an email because somebody asked you a question, that's a piece of content. I think if we could get smarter, more strategic about what we call content, then the expectation and the ability to train salespeople from BDRs to the AEs to even VPs and C-suite Everybody can be content creators. And I think this is one of the things that social media and digital and specifically the internet overall has done is that everybody can have a voice. And I know there's some, there's some negative side of that because everybody has a voice, <laughs> but in business, I think, um, you know, a young BDR who is consistently kind of sharing their experiences or sharing, Hey, I had this conversation with the customer. I learned this. It was really interesting. All of that is good content because it's all, in my opinion, it's like old school networking content. It's helping them know more people. It's helping more people know them. And if, if we really do believe sales starts with how are you known, liked, and trusted, all of that is very necessary. In my opinion, it's very necessary in this competitive landscape to to really grow our revenues and, and move the needle and beat our competition. Yeah. And, and I completely agree. I, I think that is, uh, you know, and where we want to go, where we want to evolve, we can take baby steps or, you know, the idea is, Hey, let's get started. Let's get something out there. Let's share what we can. And then I think it goes back to even, are we hiring the right people and are we training them effectively to do that job? Because, you know, five years ago, nobody was talking about that, didn't really understand. Ten years ago, it wasn't even a thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we think about, oh, can you make 80 calls during the day? That's very different than can you write original content that's compelling? And, you know, one of the things we look for and I think is absolutely critical is, is the writing skills to be able to craft a message and respond to that email or that LinkedIn or create a script that you're going to use where it's not saying, oh, I'm just going to take this outreach script and I'm going to run it 80 times a day and I'm going to hope to get, you know, this is something sales enablement did and I'm just going to run these scripts and then make phone calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that works anymore. Yeah. And, and Ray, I think you're, you're spot on with that where, mm -hmm. where we used to train people a ton on cold calling skills and yeah. conversational skills we need to now spend that time training them on content creation skills. It could be video. It could be writing. It could be how to write a good subject line. It could be how to write a compelling first two sentences. It could be how to write a compelling social post. And it, it's actually all of the above because the modern seller skill set has changed. Yeah. And it's got to be about content. And, and for me, it, it was content before too. It was just different mediums. It was cold calling. It was, um, you know, I remember in my, my companies in the early 2000s, we trained people all the time on how to work a room at a networking event yeah. because that's where they developed first conversations. 
Well, it was relevant for the time. We were at a ton of networking events. People showed up. Well, what's relevant now is people show up in social media. And so we have to train them that they can show up in the right way to create first conversations with ideal customers. Because that top, that first conversation for me is always the beginning of the truth, right? If you're not creating first conversations or you're not creating enough of them, you're never going to hit your quota. Completely agree. You got to get on first base, right? That's right. There we go. Back to it. Yeah. Next week, we have to create a different uh, different sport and see if we can kind of keep it going. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm all out, I, and I'm not I'm not a huge baseball guy, but uh, love the movie, love the premise, and uh, the the metaphor works at least. It, and it and it's it's a great metaphor. It's a great metaphor for so many things because yeah. if you can break it down in the data enough <laughs> to find out where it all begins, then you focus on the beginning, and that's why I think it is so important for all of sales leaders to focus on. How are you creating those initial conversations with customers? You know, and, and all of these tools come into the picture, right? Um, emails are still important. Phone calls are still important. Um, but content hubs and buyer hubs and social media content and LinkedIn and, and, and personal brands and profiles, those are just as important, right? And they all become part of the whole picture. So I love the point that you're both making in that the skill sets um, are what need to change and what need to evolve, right? You need to be adding these things. And tomorrow it's going to be something else, right? It doesn't stop. The, the line, the ball just keeps on moving, right? So we need to continue to add these skills. And the more we, we sit on yesterday's skills, uh, the less impact we're going to have in reaching the C-suite. So I have another question for you, right? Yeah. Um, Today, when, when, you've, when you've reached and you've had the impact with the C-suite, how does your, your proposal and your next step, right, in now conversing with, with that suite, how is that different than it might have been with some of the other folks on the team? Yeah, and, and I love that because it really gets back to the, do we understand the persona of the executive we're calling on? And do we really understand what they care about? So hopefully if we did our discovery, we had the meeting, we verified that these are the top two or three priorities on their agenda, then we're recapping that in our emails, in our proposals. And one of the interesting developments I've seen going back to the personalized video is when I send that proposal, if I'm sending a proposal to both of you and one of you is the CMO and the other is the CFO, I can personalize a 30 second video up front and say, Brandon, I'm responding. Uh, here, here's our proposal based on what we talked about. And in your role as chief marketing officer, I thought you might be really interested on page three. We talk about how it's going to improve your brand and, and increase uh, you know, your, your differentiation. And, and then I do a separate video to you, Thomas, and say, you know, we talked about how important driving cost out and being effective in our investments Here's the ROI and it's spelled out on page four. So now I can personalize the delivery of that proposal, even though it's the same proposal, but there's nothing worse, right? Then I sold to Brandon, but Thomas says no, because he has a different set of priorities, but you're both going to get a vote. And so I need to think about those stakeholders, but now I can tailor it's, uh, you know, in fishing, they talk about matching the hatch, right? So, so am I using the right lure to get that fish? Um, mixing metaphors all over the place, but yes. I want to tailor that to what you guys care about. And, you know, there's some additional uh, research. I, I think Proposify looked at this and they said, if I send a video with my proposal to you, my close rate goes up 38%. Well, guess what? If I can do something to include my, improve my close rate by 38%, I want to be doing that every time. And so, you know, I haven't tested that, but I know that as we send those and say, hey, I'm tailoring this, it's personalized, putting a face to the proposal, I'm making it relevant. I've, I've changed the game just a little bit. You've changed the game more than a little bit, my friend. You've changed the game completely, right? Because you have personalized it and you've taken the time and the energy, right? To really make sure that this person uh, who is now gonna feel special and is now gonna feel like you're listening, right? 
to give them the points that they wanted versus what might have been the case if you had just just something done something more general. So I and love chances that. are they're they're gonna open that video, right? Because now yeah. I've actually met with them. I love invested the time. They want to hear what we have to say. And it's like, oh yeah, there's Thomas again. Yeah, I wonder what he has to say. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm gonna listen to that. I love yeah, that. that's really good. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Ray, you've given me a lot of notes and a great conversation today. Thank you for that. That was a that well, was a beauty. I, I always love uh, these conversations because I learn a lot as well. And, you know, this is a case where we said we're in overlapping, but not really competitive spaces, but uh, we see the world the same way and maybe a little differently and, and always learn from that. So, um, yeah, really valuable and uh, love to continue the conversation at some point. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Love to do that. You know, I would just add to that real quick. Um, the percentage of the market uh, in terms of both companies and their leadership, uh, as well as the teams that they represent accordingly, that understands the conversation we've had is still far too low. So the fact that we, in the case of your organization and, and ours, have a little bit of overlap, who cares? We need to get that message out there loud and clear right? Because it's not yet getting where it needs yeah. to be. So we need to be doing this as much as possible so that we can help organizations, you know, get into uh, 2022 in case they hadn't noticed. So that's, <laughs> I, we want to do this all the time. Yeah, that's really good. Very good. In case they haven't noticed, it's 2022. I love yeah. it. Well, we, we hit our, we hit our 12 oh 2 uh, Eastern time here. Yeah. So should we, should we wrap it up? And Ray, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I know we've been connected on LinkedIn for quite a while, but I don't know if yeah. we had ever really spoken, at least not, not to uh, this kind of length. And I really appreciate the opportunity to know you and hear your, hear your wisdom. And like I said, I've, I've got a lot of notes over here. Thank you for that. That's great. Well, I very much enjoyed the discussion and, and I will just, uh, I guess, add, this is a program we offer it's called Selling to Key Executives. So, uh, you know, as salespeople, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. Um, you can certainly check it out on, on salesreadinessgroup.com. We have a list of our, our courses, both private and, and some public sessions. Uh, and we actually have a sales coaching session coming up in April that's a public offering. So if people want to find out more, uh, they can do that or they can reach out directly on LinkedIn to me. But um, we didn't even get into that, but how do you enable the managers to coach on all these skills? And right. that game is changing as well, right? With uh, with virtual and gong and, and video and other things. So uh, anyway, those are a couple of programs we offer and love to continue the conversation if anybody's interested. Thank you so much, Ray. Uh, thank you for joining us. Have a good day, gentlemen. All right. Have a good See weekend. See you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Take Bye -bye. care.